What's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video we're going to check out some add-ons for creating and adding things like grass and trees into Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right so first off I want to note that Grass Blade is currently 25% off as a part of the Blender Market Black Friday sale. So if you are interested in getting this add-on this could be a great time to do that. If you do end up watching this after the sale is over this is still an excellent add-on for creating different biomes and grass inside of your Blender models. All right, so Grass Blade is an add-on from the guys over at B Production. We've talked about it a little bit before. I thought we, were, we could talk a little bit in this video about kind of managing performance and making a realistic scene um, using this tool. But basically the way that this tool works is it's uh, basically a library of different biomes and plants and other things like that, allowing you to create really realistic things like grass and fields and other things like that. So basically what these are is these are collections of things like uh, little rocks and grass and basically anything that you might need from a vegetation standpoint. So grass, weeds, fields, things like that um, in order to create realistic renderings. So note that their trees add-on is a separate add-on, the tree and vegetation. And what the tree is, is that's going to have more like actual trees and things like that. So larger trees, maybe some bushes, other things. But the grass is specifically designed for things like grass and rocks. Um, and so the way that this generally works is these are broken up into biomes and the assets that are contained in here are put together into these biomes in order to create a really realistic look. So you can see how here they're basically combining the different parts and pieces in here to create this really realistic ground covering. All right, so let's take a look at the way that grass blade works. So basically what you do inside of Blender is you select the surface that you want to scatter along Long, um, and then you select one of the preset biomes. So there's a drop down over here where, so there's a number of different biomes built in. You can access them by clicking on the button right here, but notice how there's different collections in here of things like different kinds of grass or um, dead leaves that you can scatter on top of your grass. You can also do different kinds of fields. So there's a lot of different options for different biomes in here. What I want to do specifically for this one though, is I want to use one of the rocky grounds just I like the way that they look. And so let's select maybe like this rocky ground number, we'll go with rocky ground number three right here. And so what we want to do is we want to bring in rocky ground number three and we want to apply it to this surface. But I don't necessarily want to click on the load button just yet because what it's going to do is it's going to try to bring all of this in and it's just going to create a ton of geometry, right? So what we want to do is we want to start by clicking on the button for proxy in order to bring this in. Because really, we want to bring this in as proxy geometry, not as the high poly geometry. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to bring this in. And when it brings this in, it's going to bring in that low poly placeholder geometry instead of the full geometry. So if you're going to do something really big like this surface, make sure that you select the option for proxy. Otherwise, I mean, look at how many objects this is creating. Right? Like it's a ton of different objects that are in here. And the cool thing about these is these are going to render out as that full on geometry, but it's only going to create them as this low poly proxy geometry for what we're trying to do right here. However, and let's go ahead and let's add a sun real quick. So I'm just going to go to sun. We'll go ahead and we'll crank that up to maybe like five or something like that. And We'll go ahead and set up our camera like this. We'll lock our camera to our view and we'll just set up our camera view so we can see our hill. And we probably want to go ahead and set our camera. We want to go ahead and we want to adjust our camera clipping to more like a thousand meters. So something like this. And then let's go ahead and let's click over into rendered view. And for now, I'm going to leave this in Eevee but I'm just going to click over here. Well, notice how when I click over here, what that's going to do is that's going to load in all of that high poly geometry that's right here. And so notice how that actually loads fairly quickly inside of Eevee. But if you look at this, you can see how this is very, very detailed. So these rocks are definitely textured um, in a way that they're uh, very realistic, um, as well as the grass is really realistic. You can see how the uh, light is reflecting off of it, things like that. One thing you might want to do is you might want to drop a texture on the surface or at least a color. So just something in here that'll make this a little bit, that'll make this just not a white color that doesn't look super unrealistic. 
just a color like that one for right now. So at least then you don't have like a white material just kind of showing through. And so you can see how this is going to render this out as a really realistic result right here. And so one thing that's cool about this is you can go back in here and you can adjust um, what assets are added in here using the different settings. So for example, let's say that you wanted to adjust the way that the rocks are in here, like maybe there's too many big rocks or something like that. Well, what we could do is we could just select the big rock and adjust the density down to maybe something like two. Well, notice if you bring the density down to something like two, you have less big rocks that are in here. And you can do that for all of the different parts and pieces. So let's say you wanted more small rocks, you could bring this up to like 60. And notice how you get more of those rocks in here. You can also randomize the seed. And so when you randomize the seed for an object, what it's gonna do is it's gonna randomly, or it's gonna randomize where those objects are placed inside of your scene. So you can use this in order to kind of mess around with your scene to get the results that you want. And so you can also remove different parts of this. So for example, let's say that you didn't want the big rocks, you could just either click on the button right here to hide this both in your display and in your render, or you could just click on the trash can in order to delete this completely. So if you wanted to get rid of all of this, you could just come in here and just trash each one of these. Well, notice how when you trash each one of these, that's just gonna get rid of those individual parts and pieces. Well then we could come back in here and we could add something else. So instead of the rocky grounds, maybe the wild grass, um, we could select maybe like one of these meadow options, maybe the wild plain, and load this in. And again, I'm gonna jump back over into material preview mode and load these in as proxies. That way, um, again, I don't have to worry about all that high poly geometry just coming in and crashing my computer. I can let it scatter everything in. And then when I jump over into rendered mode, I'll be able to see the actual full geometry. So now, if I was to click over into rendered mode, let this load in, notice how again, you're gonna get this really detailed geometry added to this scene. And so then note that in addition, if you did have the vegetation add-on, then that's gonna give you options to add things like different trees. So for example, if I was to add this beech tree in, um, notice how this tree is gonna render out. Again, let's just go ahead and add a sun. But this is gonna render out really realistic. So between the two libraries, um, you can create some really detailed scenes in here. So between the two libraries, you could create some really realistic scenes um, with the grass blade biomes and then individual models from the tree library and other things like that. So if you are interested in either one of these tools, they are on sale. I will link to them both in the notes down below, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these assets, what kind of results you've been able to get. Just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.